Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos and place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Revelation chapter 15 And I saw another sign in heaven. Signs, angels, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues. Uh, these are the same seven angels that blew the trumpets? Don't know. Seven different angels? Doesn't say. This says we had seven angels and seven trumpets. Now we got the last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. The wrath of God, the God of love. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. God hates to sin but loves the sinner. You're wrong. Because God has given these people, from the time the book of Acts is sent out preaching all over the world, God has given these people, have heard the gospel that Jesus saves. Listen, we're coming in the same, at the end of this one, at the end of the seven years. By the end of the seven years, people who are adults, Anybody who, who could be from a teenage all the way to be an adult here have some way have heard the gospel. Now I know there are people here in Daytona Beach, Florida. They have had opportunity to hear this gospel. The rapture happened tonight or within a month or even a year, two years the rapture happened. Seven years they will be still alive. And God has been long-suffering with them. God's been patient with them. And now, listen. It, now we're going into the time of Jacob's trouble. This is a time of Jews. And God told Abraham, Genesis 12, I will curse them that curse you. These are God's people. They're being mistreated. They're being killed. The Antichrist and Satan and the false prophet are trying to eliminate them. And you touch God's saints, he takes it personally. When Jesus addressed Paul, he says, why are, you, why are you trying to kill me? Why are you attacking me? And Jesus took it personally, Acts chapter 9. So wrath of God. And God's holy because he has told these people. There's been 144,000. And you know the Gentiles were heard what's going on with them. You had Moses and Elijah show up. And what did they do when Moses and Elijah are killed by the beasts? They have a Merry Christmas and send gifts and they're happy. They don't want anything to do with God. And all these events that happen to mankind, God's like, listen, will you pay attention? And men will not get right. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. Well, God has to be the God of creation because how can you get fire and a sea of glass together? With the fire, you're not going to have the sea of glass because the fire is going to dissolve the sea. Or you can't have fire with the sea of glass because water puts the fire out. And then they have gotten the victory over the beast. So we are talking about, I think, a Jewish remnant that are not going to give in. And there will be some Gentiles that will not do it. And over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. And we read in the previous chapter, chapter 14, 
Verse 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, and his image, and receive his mark, in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture unto the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of his holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended forever and ever. They have no rest, even day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. These are the people that God will judge in the lake of fire, and these plagues that are coming up. The ones in chapter 15, they don't receive the mark. They don't receive the number, and they say no to that image. These people right here will be likened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel. And when they did not bow down to that image, they were put into the fire. And then the Lord Jesus Christ shows up in that fire with them. I'm glad to meet you boys. What's going on? Well, here we're just throwing it here because we didn't do what the, what the world did. I know. That's why I'm joining you. That's why I'm not out there with them. And sometimes I wonder when they said Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out of that. Sometimes I wonder if they like, no, we don't want to. It's better in here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were put in a fire. But those that received the image, the mark, and the number of the beast will go into a fire without God. But the presence of the Lord will be there to see them. And here are people in chapter 15. They did not go in with the world standards. You realize how hard that's going to be? You realize how much you're going to put your life in jeopardy? We got people that don't like us because we preach on the street. It's going to be a lot more than them not liking us. And calling us names and flipping us off and, and cussing at us. There's going to be life or death here because the Bible read earlier... No man might, let's see, which chapter is it? Chapter 13, uh, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of beasts, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Well, here they are in chapter 15. If they don't worship the image, the image speaks as is that man over there. That's kind of hard to get along. That's kind of hard to hide yourself when the image will identify who you are. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bound, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. That no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. Or the name of the beast. Or the number of his name. Now look at those three things how they keep showing up. You cannot go to your great store and buy anything you want without that mark. Did you just break your leg? When you go to the emergency room, if you got no mark, you're not going to be treated. Jesus said, woe unto those women who, are, who give suck in those days or about to give birth to, to children. Because if you don't receive that mark, that baby is going to die in your arms of malnutrition and of starvation and dehydration if they don't turn you over first for child indecency care. Because don't forget, I, listen, I've seen the movie. When I got saved, those movies were, were out there by crazy. And there still are. That image tells us that that mother over there is not taking care of her child because her and that child will not receive me. How's that? These people that come out of this tribulation period not receiving the mark. Let's read it again for them. I saw, as it were, a, a, a sea of glass mingled with fire. Then they have gotten the victory over the beast. And over his image, and over his mark, and over his, over the number of his name. Over the image? 
The image is saying they are not worshiping me, Satan. Stand on the sea of glass. It's got to be ice. It's got to be some kind of ice. The Bible speaks of hoarfrost. So it's not ice, but it's a kind of ice. Something that scientists and Christians have never seen yet. It's a sea of glass. I don't think it's figure. I think God knew enough. I, I think there's ice in the Bible. Having the harps of God. Now these are not angels. These are men who are living in the tribulation period. Who have overcome Satan. And his image. And they are given the harps of God. There has been no music in heaven since Lucifer fell. And these people, men and women who overcome Satan, Lucifer, are given the harps of God. Say, start up the start up the music and start playing the hymns for me. I want to hear it again. What a revelation that for those who got victory over Lucifer, who becomes Satan, the devil, the old serpent, the dragon. God says, hand those harps over to them. Lucifer is no more here to play the music. If you read Ezekiel 28, he had the music, Nebuchadnezzar. And God says, in his absence for all eternity, those that got victory over Satan, give them a harp. I want to hear it. And this would be something that David would had played as a shepherd. And the Bible says that David made up instruments to praise God. And you got to be very careful with your music. Because it's become foul because music is after Lucifer. And Cain's family. Read your Bible. And they sang the song of Moses. And you go back to Exodus 15 for that. So I'm going to assume with the Song of Moses in Exodus 15, these are Jewish people. And I made myself scratch my head because when Jesus Christ comes, there's a remnant in, uh, I say Stella Petra, but I could be wrong. I don't know the exact name of it. But that place that's prepared in the wilderness for that woman, Israel. And when you read 15, here's a bunch of people that the image has killed because they will not worship. They will not take that mark. Forehead or right hand. God says, here's the harps. And they sang the song of Moses. And you can go back to Exodus 15 and read it. Exodus 15 is a hymn. That will be sung to God. It is history repeating itself. I was telling my wife today, we were at a place today and the stupid TV was on. And they said Friday night they're going to they're gonna talk about Watergate. And I leaned over and I said, yeah, you think they're going to tell the truth? They're not going to. Here history plays out. Exodus 15. Do you remember what happened when we came to Exodus 15? When they got victory over who? Pharaoh. Guess who is a type of Antichrist? Pharaoh. Now that you got victory over him, here's your harp. Start singing the song of Moses. That would be an honor, you know. I'm going to go so far as say that with the scripture, there has not been singing in heaven since Lucifer fell. He was almost on there. Now here we go. We pick up the book of Revelation. We start seeing new songs. 144,000. Now we see these people who have been killed by the image. I believe these, these people, their victory over the image and over the, the, the number and over the mark, they died. How's that for victory? They became martyrs. Now, these aren't the ones you look at. Oh, I don't know. The ones on the altar lose their neck, their heads. It doesn't say how these die, but there's only one way for them to die. 
their heads are chopped off. Then, then again, the Bible says, "Him that get, dies with him that kills by the sword will die by the sword." And what we see in chapter fifteen is, you realize how many Jews are being killed. I'm sorry to say, Adolf Hitler is going to be a pussycat to compare what's going to happen in the tribulation period. When Jesus Christ comes. Again, if it's Salem Petra, you can't fit many people there. And there's not going to be many Jews there. A remnant. The Song of Moses, the servant of God. And the Song of the Lamb. So we're going to sing, they're going to sing to the Lamb. What was that song of Exodus 15? For those Jewish people. Not only victory over, over Satan and over Pharaoh. But by that blood of the lamb. When I see the blood I will pass over you. They left Egypt that night. So they are going back to the redemption under the blood. But this time by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we've already seen that they have the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. The law tells them I cannot worship that image. I cannot get that mark in my body. I've got to serve Jesus Christ. Go ahead and kill me then. And look at here. Absent from the body and they're standing before God. Sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, capital L. Saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. That's not the song of Moses. Let's try this again, Mr. Jehovah Witness. And they sang the song of Moses. Go back to Exodus 15 and sing that. And the song of the Lamb, saying... All right, here's the song. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, addressing the Lamb. As God. Just and true are thy ways, thou King, capital K, of saints. Now again, that's not church. These are Jewish people. Jesus is only King to the Jews, not the church. And they're saints because they have they got the testimony of God, they got the faith of Jesus Christ, and they're saints. So they call finally there'll be Jewish people that will call Jesus Christ Lord God Almighty. Man, when Jesus spoke about his relationship being God the Father, he upset the Pharisees. They tried him as blasphemy, and now here they are. Jesus, you are God, Jehovah, Almighty, Almighty, Jehovah. You can't even get a Jehovah Witness to say that. They're not going to be there. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. For thou art holy. Here's the song of the Lamb. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. It's coming up real quick in the millennium. For thy judgments are made manifest. There's the song of the Lamb. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen. Now, can you even imagine what that's going to be like? No sin. No curse. In glory. It's going to shine. You see what they what they said about Jesus when he was on the Mount Transfiguration with Moses and Elijah? Man, it was glistering. 
and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. Pure gold, finest gold, holy gold. Heaven's going to be a beautiful place. It ain't going to just be sitting on a cloud playing a harp. And then, remember, it says golden. You ever seen gold sparkle? Can you imagine that gold and that fine white linen sparking by the light of God? With that green uh, rainbow? God is light. Jesus is light. That light is just sparkling throughout all heaven. And we haven't even got the city of Jerusalem yet. The Bible says there is no need of a sun up there, a moon. God is light in this place. And this place is tremendously just lit by the glory of God. You couldn't make a light bulb this bright. It put the sun to shame. Because the sun has spots. We're going to a glory, glory, glorious place. The seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, full the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. We're going to come into the third set, minus the woes. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God. And from his power, no man was able to enter in the temple. Remember reading about that? The glory of that cloud? Till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. And then we'll get into, Lord willing, the next night we'll get into these vials. But these vials are more exposing those of the beast and the image and the mark. There are still Jews. And they're still in trouble. But we had the 144,000 go to heaven. We've had those who were under the, under the altar that have been beheaded. They're up there. You have Moses and Elijah was brought up. You have this group that's brought up. We, as the Church of Jesus Christ, in glory or right, we're going to start seeing heaven start getting populated with Jews. More and more and more. And there's going to be some classes of Jews that are going to get more respect than the church will. Because these people, they're standing before God singing. I hear some Christians speak and they think that all glory is going to worship the church, you know. God has his first love set to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The church only came in, the Gentile only came in because the Jews rejected Jesus Christ. Read your Bible. The Gentiles are only sent in because, you know, I'm just angry at the Jews. I'll make them angry. I'll bring those rotten Gentiles that Jonah and Peter didn't like. We're in because the Jews rejected. But those Jews are God's people. And as God's people, they're going to get a better, greater position in glory before God the throne. That's what it says. When do you get, where do you see a Christian get a harp and start singing to God? I don't see it. I see Jews doing it. Whole book of, the whole book of Psalms is in the Jewish Old Testament. It's a Jewish book. It's sung by Jewish men. I guess God likes that Jewish music. We'll be quite shocked when we find out what God thought of our music. And for that, listen to my biblical uh, truth about our hymns.